Hey Gump Town, how y'all doing on this lovely Tuesday evening? We are live downtown outside of the city hall. We just left the city council meeting and I'm Jamal Thomas and I got a city council update. The meetings were very good. It was very interesting. The mayor gave his message. Um, he gave a financial update. We have some positive numbers. Um, the sales tax has increased. It's been a 15% increase since last year. The lodging lodging taxes have increased as well gasoline tax has increased two percent since last year a growth rate the mayor said that he's good to see these numbers um we are recovering our economy since COVID 19 and the alcohol uh tax growth rate has uh went up five and a half percent since last year also with the budget we're doing real good we have almost six million dollars in our reserves and that's awesome the sanitation department was uh, recognized today. 95% uh, of the trash was collected over the weekend. Um, the mayor also gave an update on the Montgomery Police Department. He did receive uh, Chief Finley's resignation. Um, the acting chief is Cedric Dean. He's the act acting chief now. Um, he plans to name an interim chief in two weeks. And then they're gonna do a nation nationwide search. They're gonna look internally and externally um, he anticipates um, the search taking about 90 days. Really don't want to rush it, but he wants to find a quality person. This is a period of transition. He's going to, the mayor will keep us updated on the police search. And also, city workers got a pay raise. The, um, the city, uh, Montgomery City uh, County Personnel Board voted for a raise. Um, all city employees are going to get a, a double digit pay percentage increase. Public safety workers, that includes the police department and the firefighters, they're going to get a 14.5% pay increase. And our service maintenance workers, which includes our sanitation workers, street maintenance, landfill maintenance, they're going to get a 19% pay increase. The mayor said it's going to help with uh, recruitment and retention and to help restore dignity at work. Also, we are celebrating Pride Month in City Hall in front of City Hall on June 25th at 6 p.m. It's gonna be Stand With Love. So come stand in love. And also go to commemorate Pride and that uh, shooting that happened in Florida. I think it was either last year or the year before at the nightclub. Now on to the juicy stuff, the Aqua Ultra Lounge. It used to be uh, with Club Ciroc and Bluebirds on Atlanta Highway. Now here's the thing, you know the old the old fun zone that property it was like some some things with the property like that property is for sale the bank owns it and the old former owner might buy it back however the uh new owner of the aqua lounge spoke to the the banks and said that you know they can he can use that property to uh as parking spaces as long as he keeps it clean however the issue is Hey, probably as I think it's like in foreclosure. What if the uh, somebody else wants to buy it with the new buyers allow them to use the parking lot? So that's the issue, and a lot of concerns, you know, with the parking spaces. Um, our president pro tem CC Calhoun, he said, you know, uh, Councilman Jen Wright is not really comfortable with it. Um, CC said, you know, he's all down for a safe entertainment environment to bring in tax dollars. Um, about the for sale sign, you know, the grievances will stay in place. Um, it's going to be carried. Um, the owner said they just found out that the property is in foreclosure. So it's, it's a lot of crazy stuff. So it's going to be carried over, for, carried over for two weeks. Here's some more juicy stuff. On time package store on the corner of Norman Bridge and Edgemont. Um, it's that, uh, used to be a car dealership right by Greg's across from the old Sahara. The owner, he wants to make that a package store, but um, the community opposes it. Like the Clover there, Idlewild, it's a neighborhood association. They're not in favor of it. They said it's too close to a residential area. Um, they said the intersection is bad. It's been like a lot of shootings and stuff over there. And they said they remember um, it's some people who uh, wanted to buy the old Sahara and they turned it into the Dreams Facility Banquet. And they said they were denied the uh, liquor license too, so they wanted to just base it off precedent. 
Um, however, the owner, you know, who plans to open a package store, you know, you know, he said, you know, he didn't know anything about the neighborhood associated meetings, the neighbors, that he wasn't invited to talk to any neighborhood association meetings. Uh, a representative from the South Hall Neighborhood Association meeting said he just found out about it today. And so far they uh, are opposed of it. And I know the, the guy, I forget his name, who wants to open up the package store, his concern was like across the street, um, the K&G Food Mart, you know, they're on the agenda later and you know, they're, they want to sell beer and wine. So what's the difference? So he said, it's the same difference. But it's gonna, and he also said, you know, in other parts of Cloverdale, you know, we have the Pine Bar in Cloverdale. Um, and he also said that his his old car shop where he wants to build the package store, it used to be a gas station, so he still has pumps. So what would the difference be? So it's gonna get carried over to the uh, for two more weeks to get him time to talk to the neighborhood associations and everything like that. And I know Councilor R.G. Graham explained to him like the difference between him and the. the the KNG Food Mart is that you want to have a package store. The KNG Food Mart is under new management, so they're just renewing what they were already doing. So that was that concern there. So that's getting carried over as well. Um, there was an ordinance. Uh, they voted to approve the ordinance to grant a license agreement to construct, install, and maintain a neighborhood sign and the right of way of Marty Lane. Um, the council also adopted the resolution approving the proposed Chappelle House and West End Neighborhood Preservation Plan and authorizing Mayor Reed to make applications to the Alabama Historical Commission for $4,500 from the Certified Local Government Grant Program. Councilwoman Argy Graham explained that it's just to conduct that money would be used to, con to conduct a study in the area for revitalization so you know to look at the community needs. Okay. The Beverage Center, I guess they're under new ownership too. They reapplied for their uh, liquor store license, the one on um, Atlanta Highway and Perry Hill Road. The council unanimously voted unanimously to approve that. Um, the Dollar General on Lower Retumka Road came to apply for their retail beer and table wine. The council voted to approve that. Now going back to the Kanji Food Mart that's across the street from the um, Perspective site of the own um, on time liquor store. Now, of course, the owner went and opposed that. However, the council uh, voted to approve their uh, license for beer and wine. It was one extension, and that was Council Councilwoman Marche Johnson. There were also some uh, uh, reappointments made to different boards. Um, Councilwoman Marche Johnson, she appointed uh, Chris Shirley Edwards to the Mental Health Authority Board, and that's um, she she will be replacing the late great Reverend E. Baxter Morris. Councilor Glenn Pruitt appointed Donna Ferrier to the Montgomery Clean City Commission. She she will be replacing Ronald Fulmer. And also there were public comments on non-agenda items after the meeting, which mean the public came to discuss some concerns. One public comment was in particular, some people from community, they complained about the park in Chisholm. They said the park has no lights, no speakers, and it's not fair because parks on the east side, like on Taylor Road and Bell Road, they have their lights. It doesn't make no sense when they play, have night games, they have to go somewhere else. They've been complaining about lights. They, they haven't had heard no communication back since April, so the mayor is going to uh, see about getting temporary lights instead. Until a local author came and he he wants to start a summer reading program. And he wants to ask the council to purchase 200 books so he can do the program. But they recommended that he uh you know partner with all the other people who do partner with other people in the city, the city, you know, doing the summer reading programs. I think Ann Sykes with uh, the uh, Education Foundation and um, the guy, he's in the process of getting his nonprofit and he was informed to uh, apply to be a vendor. And that's, and I think that's all we have for our city council meeting recap. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, 
Also, um, Counselor Argy Graham, she said the store on 1015 Mobile Road, she's been getting a lot of complaints about it. Uh, you know, complaints, shooting, crime, so many complaints. So before she uh, calls for a show cause hearing, she's going to have talk to the owners. Council Marche Johnson, she's uh, called for a show cause hearing with the Extended State Studio, 2750 Chestnut Street, right off Ann Street, right by the package store. It's a lot going on. Um, she just wants to know their plans to, for the neighborhood because I know the Highland Park uh, Neighborhood Association, they went over there, they did a neighborhood cleanup because you see that area, it'd be so many buggies, so, many, so much trash, Walmart buggies, uh, bed mattress like people's like living 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 i know it's a extended stay not a permanent stay and it's just so much it's like an eyesore in that community because i stay in that community so it's a lot so they go have a show cause here and see what they go do because if they don't do what they're supposed to do they might get shut down so that's it gum town tv this is the city council meeting and that city council meeting will be in two more weeks make sure you follow gum town um, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and also visit our website, www.gumtownmag.com. Gumtown, we be everywhere.